Okay, that was the quick version. Now let's look at it a bit more in depth and explain it to people who aren't that familiar with After Effects. So obviously the first thing is you start up After Effects and you start up a new composition. So that's composition, new composition. I actually choose the HDTV preset, or you could just type in 1920 by 1080. I chose 25 frames a second because that's what my stuff is. And I just typed in the duration as six seconds. Just like in Premiere, you can just type six zero zero and that becomes six seconds okay and I've now got a composition and I could just click on it in the bin and press the enter key and rename it you don't have to but there we are blank composition the next thing I want to do is I want to put in the the shapes so if we pop back to Premiere you can see I've got these purpley shapes here I need to put those in now, if I had Photoshop, I could just go into Photoshop and make them, but I'm going to do this entirely in After Effects. So back in After Effects, what I did is I went to the actual timeline for the composition. So in After Effects, you've got your project window up here. You've got a preview window over here, lots of different controls here. And then down here at the bottom, I happen to have a thing called render queue sitting there, which is what I don't want. I actually want to see this thing title. Title is the composition. It's the timeline for my title. This is where I'm going to lay everything out. And this is where I'm going to animate everything. It's just like a, a timeline inside of Premiere. So I just needed to pop that up so I could see it. Now what I want to do is to put in a new layer which will become my shape. So I'm going to go to a blank area down here because I want to add in a new layer. And all I'm going to do is go to the blank layer, right click and say new solid. And this is going to become the box which is the top left box and it's a bit purpley so let's choose some kind of purpley color and then go okay okay i've now got a completely purple box so all doing a new solid does is just make you up a, a completely purple box i now want to make the shape out of it now if you pop back into premiere you can see my first shape is this little parallelogram here so what i'm going to do is just make up that shape so i'm just going to pop back into after effects and I'm going to draw a mask over the top of my solid here. Now to draw a mask, you come up to the pen tool and then you start clicking. So I'm just going to click one, two, three, four, and then click back on this point here, which closes that shape up. And you'll immediately see that chops a hole out of my big solid. So all I'm now seeing is that and a completely transparent background. Now I'm going to have to make this a bit bigger, so let's just move these windows around exactly the same way that you would move in in Premiere. And I'm going to zoom into the composition by using my mouse wheel. So if you stick your cursor over the top of the title and then use the mouse wheel, you can zoom in. Now I've zoomed in so much that I can't see the bit I was fiddling with. But to move across, all I've got to do is hold down on the space bar. And you notice when I do that, the cursor there changes from that pen to a hand and then I can grab hold of the picture and move it across until I can see the bit I'm fiddling with. What I want to do with this is not actually have a big slant on there, I want a nice straight line. So I'm just going to pick up that point and move it till it looks straight. And I'm going to pick up that point and move it till it looks roughly the same angle as that one. And that's it, I've got my first shape. Again, look at Premiere, you've got your first shape there. Now, honestly, I can't tell in After Effects whether it's in the same place that it is in Premiere. If I was making this up from scratch, I wouldn't care. But if I want to make it match this title, the simplest thing is I'm going to come down to the little camera icon in Premiere and click on it. And that will take a snapshot of what it sees at the moment. I'm going to stick it somewhere on the computer. So I've got a training folder here. I'm just going to stick it in that folder and I'm going to call it something then go back to After Effects and I'm going to go to the project window double click on a blank space and load up that still and then I'm just going to drag that and dump it onto the After Effects timeline so now you can see I've got that in the background and yeah my shape doesn't quite match the original so all I've got to do is select that layer and then grab hold of these points and then move them so they're in the right places. 
And there we are, I've got the shape that I want. Obviously it's a big purple blob, and I don't want a big purple blob, I want a gradient blob with an edge on it. But that's it, I've got the shape in the right place. I can turn off this layer very easily so I can see it and compare it to the one underneath it. All you do is you come down to the timeline here and you can see these little eyes just like you have in Premiere. If you click on one of those and turn off the eye, it turns that layer off. So now I can't see the shape, but I can see the one underneath it. So I've got that yellow line of the mask. Well, that's quite nice because, of course, I can just zoom in a bit more and make sure I line up my mask perfectly if I want to. So my shape's coming in to be exactly the right shape compared to the original but if I want to see it without that yellow line there's a nice little button here which just turns off masks it doesn't stop the masks doing what it wants but what it does is it turns it off so you don't see it here so now I can't see anything about the top left layer at all if I click the eye turn it back on you can see my shape is the right shape so the mask's still working, you're just not seeing it up here. You can always click that and turn it back on again. But that's so useful because it just gets it out of the way so you can see what it looks like. So okay, I've got the shape right, but I haven't got the bevel and I haven't got the gradient. And that's very easy. I do it with layer styles, just the same sort of thing that you have inside of Photoshop. You get to them either by going up to the layer heading and choosing layer styles, or by going to the track on the timeline and right click on it and saying layer styles and here you can see you've got a bunch of different layer styles and the ones I'm after are obviously bevel and gradient so first of all I'm going to click bevel and see what happens bosh I've got a bevel is it the right size I don't know let's have a look at it it probably is about right but let me go down to the timeline here and click on the little triangle to open it up and you can see you've got all sorts of different things to control what that looks like. And if I want the bevel to be bigger, then I can drag on it and I can make it bigger or I can make it smaller. I can decide whether it's an outer bevel or an inner bevel or an emboss. Generally fiddle around with it to make a look that you want. Actually, the way it started, which was an inner bevel with size five, that's obviously what I was using because it looks exactly the same to me. Let's turn it off again, yeah, that's about the same size bevel. So that's got your bevel sorted out. Next thing I want to do is to get the gradient on there. So again, go to the layer, right click on it, and then choose layer styles, and then gradient. And you'll see immediately I've got a gradient. It's the wrong color, but I've got a gradient. So let's open up the gradient overlay, look at all the different options in here, and the one I want to go for is this, edit gradient. Where you can see it goes from the white bits to the black bits. Well, for a start, I want the black at the bottom and the white at the top. So I'm going to go to white and I'm going to click on this. It's a typical sort of Adobe gradient thingy-me-bob. The bottom blob here controls the color. The top blob here controls the transparency. So if I wanted it to be white but semi-transparent, I could click on that and I could adjust how transparent it was. But no, I don't. I want it solid. What I really want to do is just change the color. So I'm going to go to the white color stop, as they call it, at the bottom and double click on it and the white is the bottom bit there so I'm going to make that black I'm going to go to the black one double click on it and let's make it purplish and there we are I've now got a gradient not sure if it's exactly the same colors as the original but if I'm happy with it who cares on the other hand if I do want to make it exactly the same colors as the original that's very easy what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off this layer again so turn off that layer completely go back to edit gradient and I'm just going to sample the colors I had there in the first place. So click on the black which you know is the bottom one and instead of choosing the color in here I'm going to choose the eye picker and come over here and click and it's chosen that color. Go to the other end eye picker and sample out of the top and now I've got a gradient which is from a sort of darker purple to a lighter purple. Turn the layer back on again and you can see how close I've got to the original which frankly looks pretty much the same so now I've got my shape there I don't have the little lens flare but I've got my shape now let's zoom out a bit next thing I want to do is create the other shapes so all I'm going to do is copy this one change the mask points around so it matches and if necessary change the color so what I'm going to do is take that layer and I'm going to duplicate it so let's close it up just so it makes it easier to see things and I want to make a copy of that and then work on the copy. So all you do is say duplicating it. Select it and you either come up to the edit heading and choose duplicate or you use the keyboard shortcut which is control and D. 
And I do duplicate things a lot in After Effects, so I use Control D a lot, I remember it. And D, duplicate, makes sense, right? And I've got a new layer. They're both called Top Left. I'd really like to call this one Bottom because I'm going to make that shape up at the bottom here. So I'd like to rename it. Now there's two ways of renaming it. You right click on it and choose Rename. Or you hit the return key on the keyboard. Now the return key is the big one which is next to all the letters. It's not the one that says enter which is next to the number pad. People sometimes get confused between them. If I hit the enter key you'll notice what happens is the window up here changes. You've got two basic windows inside of After Effects. The composition window is like the program window inside of Premiere so it shows you the effect that you're doing. The layer window is a bit like the clip window, so if I press on the enter key it opens it up in a clip window and it just shows me that one layer. You also get at that by double clicking on a layer. Now again another way you might think you're going to rename something if you used a Premiere is to double click on it. No you don't do that in After Effects because that will open it up in After Effects' clip window. So I'm going to go back to the composition window, select the layer and press the return key. And now I can type in the name just so I know in the future which bit it refers to. And now all I want to do is move the mask around so it matches the bottom shape. So I'll have to turn the mask back on again. Maybe zoom in a bit so I can see it a bit better. And then I'm just going to grab the little dot to the top and move it around so my shape now matches the bottom one. Spacebar, move it across, grab hold of the dot and move it over there. And, oh, uh, yes, yeah, probably right. I mean, these lines here might not be 100% straight, but actually there's some information that comes up here in the information window you might find useful. So if I, I start moving that point around, you can see, all right, ah, the position is 1572 by 913. So 1572 is the left and right, or the X position, and 913 is the up and down. So if I go to the start of that one, if I get that at 913, then I'm going to have a completely straight line. There we are. I've now got a completely straight line along the top. Let's have a look at the bottom one. That one, uh, let's shove it at 1002. And then move over to this one. And move that one till it's 1002 as well. Now I've got a completely straight line at the top and the bottom. That's if you want to be really picky and not just do it by eye. Okay, let me zoom out. And let me just turn the layer off and see how much it matches the one at the bottom. Yeah, that's fine. Color wise, not sure the gradient's exactly the same. It's pretty close. But again, I can do exactly what I did before. So let me turn off the layer. Go to the layer styles, which are already there because I duplicated what I had before. Go to the gradient, edit the gradient, choose that one and sample the bottom, choose that one and sample the top. Just because I'm being picky and I want it to look exactly the same as my original. Job done on that one turn it back on again. Now let's duplicate it. So again, control D, enter key, call it right, select it. What I'm going to do is grab these points and move them off screen and grab the opening points over here and move it up there. Job done. But obviously the colors are wrong. So again, I'm just going to turn the layer off, go to the gradient, edit the gradient, sample the bottom color click on this one sample the top color that's it so i'm happy with that now i've now got my three shapes by the way interesting little thing on the gradient here is this little option here align with layer you notice if i change that the gradient changes because actually what i've got here is i've got a solid now solid is just something that goes over the entire image. And if I say align with layer, then it makes sure that whatever gradient I've set up fits inside the mask. So it goes from there to there. If I turn it off, my gradient basically goes from here to here. So you get less of it in the mask. It's a nice little option that it's on as a default because you are probably going to have a gradient there which just fits in the bit you can see. Lots of other nice little options here, obviously different types of gradient, different angles. I changed the black and the white by just changing those two original colors, but I could have reversed it, so it was the other way up. All pretty easy to fiddle with. 
None of this has been keyframes, but just like in Premiere, you could click on the little stopwatch here. You could animate any of these things. So I could change, say, the colors over time. They could start off as purple and go green or whatever. Everything's animatable, and it's all animatable in exactly the same way as Premiere.